Hi, I'm Chad Momberg, and I'm here with Syed Badrea. How you doing, Syed? Life is good. How you doing, Chad? Pretty good. So you have an interesting story on how you made your way up into Hollywood. You were born and raised in Egypt, and then eventually made your uh, way to America through what? How, how did that, how that come to be? Well, it, you know, people in America forget that Americans have influenced the whole world with cinema. I grew up in the ghetto of Egypt where uh, during the war in 1967, I was a little boy, so I used to hide in the movie theater and watch American movie, and I felt in love with America. So all my life, I, I was dreaming outside the ghetto to get away, and I got away when Sadat made the peace with Israel in 1979, so I came in 19. 79 to Boston I study you know I work hard to get where I am but I had a dream would she come to America so when you first came to America how much of a um, culture shock was it compared to your life in Egypt not much because I had lived in the American movie for 10 20 years before I yeah. come I came when I was 21 and during that time, I had like 10 years or 15 years living in America during in the movie, in the movie. So I was like, oh, that's home for me. Yeah, so it wasn't. It was the language. And I left my country. I left the language. I left the culture. That's the only thing. But, uh, you know, America that does you know, kind of very close to the movie live because I didn't watch only uh, you know, uh, commercial movie. I watch good movies, so it's yeah. an idea about cinema. So, did you come to America by yourself, or did you have family that came with you, or any friends? No, that's me, and uh, I didn't have the language, and I, I just it was a cowboy. I was an American. Uh, you were. Yeah. That's that's pretty brave of you. I have to give you that. Well, it was no way out. I just want to come and I, I, you know, I, I, I had, you know, a strong feeling to succeed. And that's, I had a heart. I didn't have so much uh, talent, but I had a big heart and motivation to succeed. Yeah, so that was, that was your, and probably like the way life was back at home, that could have been a, another driving force for you as well. Well, the, the life at home, I was growing in a tough neighborhood where they sell hashish wholesale, so I was a tough boy. And I'm still, sometime come, the ghetto coming out when, when, when someone, you know, kind of disagreed me and put me down, the ghetto come out, and I'm a tough, you know. I, <laughs> you know, I was a tough boy because I had to, you know. I had yeah, to, you're to, not some, to live you're not, you're, not, you're not just some pretty Hollywood face, right? No, I, you know, I'm a, a teddy bear, you know, I'm a nice guy, I have a nice family, but when, when someone, uh, you know, kind of, when someone scratch me, I bite him. If he bite yeah. me, I eat him alive. You mess with the bull, you get the horns, right? There you go, and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's no way out. Just <laughs> so, you, so you come to America, you're going to school, you, you're um, working. What are you doing to keep busy, uh, pay the bills and whatnot while you're going to school? Well, I work in, you know, the Quincy Market Final Hall. I was a dishwasher at Lily's at that time. Uh, you know, crickets and Lily's were they have now in the chair. The, I work as a dishwasher bus boy and I become a waiter and you know I I I when I came to Boston for a few a months ago I went to the Boston International Film Festival for a movie yes. I brought and I win the best best picture and best director and the people who I work with at that time came and uh, the owner of uh, Tips Tears and the waterfront is my boss, Lori, and uh, it just is beautiful. I love Boston. It's my home because I came from Egypt and I stayed in Boston for five years before I moved to New York to study film in NYU Film School. Then I left the Hollywood, but, but uh, Boston is my home. Yeah. So what was your first like 
Hollywood break and how did that come to be? Well, it was a movie in New York I did uh, with uh, Pelé. It was about soccer. And then I moved to Hollywood and I worked with Anthony Perkin as his assistant. And I, I did a movie then, uh, you know, he, he told me, Saeed, you're nice looking, you better get a little bit heavy and put a big beard so you can sell what America looking for, which I did. And uh, it worked, it worked. I work a lot as, you know, playing a bad Arab guy and it worked until in 2000, I created a company to make movies about, you know, a migrant, about Arab American, about, you know, uh, my first movie I direct was documentary about uh, Egyptian film classics and preservation and restoration. So it's almost a letter to whom, uh, you know, to respect Egyptian cinema because I, I grew up watching the two cinema. So you basically... Um, worn the hat of basically writer, actor, director, and even assistant. You basically started from the ground up and worked to where you're at now. Which and everybody should do that. I mean, you get knowledge just working as... I start as a craft service, you know, making coffee for everybody. And, uh, you yeah. know, so, so I did it very well. I mean, I made it good. And uh, Anthony Birkin snatched me and he, I become his assistant directly because I was motivated I you know I I did when I made coffee I made the best coffee when I made the hummus I made the best hummus so you know I I show that I am a product of uh, you know good uh, strong cinematic value and also uh, kind of ethic you know working yeah. ethic and that hey. will take you a lot of places in Hollywood Whatever you do, you make sure you try your best at it and then try to be the best at it, too. Well, well then, I learned from, you know, it's outside the box, you know, Vince Lombardi, and he said, you know, <laughs> drive to get perfection. If you don't get the perfection, at least you are very close to it. So I learned from, you know, American outside uh, the movie, like, you know, football uh, coach, and... Uh, that's gave me a really strong ethic. And it's, and it's obviously it's paid off. So now of all the things you've done, you know, writing, directing, and, you know, acting, what is, what is your favorite to do? Well, actually, to, to, to create a movie from the beginning. I mean, you know, to write it. And I'm working on something really uh, very close to my heart. It's about human trafficking, about uh, little girls, uh, 13 years old, being sold to the old 80 years old Saudi man. And the girl is from the village of the Nile. And I'm writing a movie about the, the human trafficking from Egypt to the Gulf. And so I start the research, and so a lot of movie I do, I have to research and make a migrant story. Because if you study American cinema, the best American movies is like The Godfather, is a migrant yeah. story. Once about time in America is a migrant story, The Scarface. All this movie tells a migrant story, which... If you look at your grandfather or your grand-grandfather, it was an immigrant story. Yeah. So, the re so you do the research, you do everything that's involved to put it together, and then you, you write it, and then you start get how you get from the writing stage to the uh, actually getting it onto the cutting room floor or filming part of it. Is there a, well, a long there process? Well, there's a finance situation, which, you know, it's very limited for a story. You know, I, I I work in Hollywood, so I make money, and I put this money, you know, I make like Iron Man, you don't mess with the Zohan, and the yep. Dictator. So you make money in Hollywood movie, and you take this money, and you put it in where your heart is, is a movie to tell a story, because... I'm here to say something, you know, I, you know, 10 years ago or 20 years ago, when I started 30 years ago, it wasn't any Arab American filmmaker. It was Omar Sharif, but he was a star. He didn't build a community. Now I'm working to build a community for your young Arab American to look, you know, whatever success I have, small or big, and build on it.